Subtractive synthesis in many ways is the opposite of additive synthesis. Instead of using sine waves as building blocks to construct a complex timbre from the ground up, with subtractive synthesis, we actually begin with a complex timbre and then we subtract from it using an audio filter. So to demonstrate, let's create uh, some white noise, which is the basically equal distribution of uh, frequencies across the entire audible range. We'll use the sonogram to see how this white noise is behaving. And then <clears throat> we'll use a biquad filter, biquad tilde, to filter that noise and remove some frequencies. Um, now there are a couple variables that we can use to control the filter but it's most easily controlled using a graphical user interface called the filter graph. Um, but because there are some, there's a little bit of coding and some variables that would be required to make that a, a, an intuitive interface, just go ahead and open up the help file to buy quad tilde, unlock it. And for now, let's just copy this and paste it into our patch. I'll explain a little bit later what actually is going on. And the left outlet of the filter graph will go into the left inlet of biquad tilde. So we actually have a signal, which is the white noise. And then this is a graphical user interface that allows us to control the filter. And as you can see right here, uh, the filter is doing its work. So we'll have a gain control and an easy DAC to hear what's going on. Um, and <clears throat> the most important part of this Right here is the, um, the behavior of this filter. The y-axis is amplitude or loudness, and the x-axis is frequency. And this is loudness represented uh, in decibels. So it's either boosting, if it's above zero, where the gain, you can see the gain is also represented right here. If it's above zero, it's going to boost a certain frequency, a frequency range. And if it's below zero, it will cut it or make it less loud. If it's at zero, <clears throat> it remains the same. So right here, this low, this kind of gray area is the range of frequencies that is being let through the filter. And anything above 307 hertz, which is currently our cutoff frequency, gets rolled off and gradually cut off. So we don't hear any high frequencies. This is what we call a low pass filter, meaning low frequencies get to pass through the filter. And you can hear this with a white noise. Now the reason we use white noise is because it's timbrely very rich. So generally with subtractive synthesis, you want to use sounds that are, uh, that have a lot of overtones that are very timbrely rich. Uh, you can think of it almost as uh, sculpting, right? We have a block of granite or a block of marble right here. And then we're using the filter to chip away at that to create a, a more refined or more controlled uh, timbre. So, what I would recommend is that you play around a little bit with the kinds of filters. High pass, for example, will let only the high frequencies through, and it'll cut off everything below, in this case, 307 hertz. You can see when I sweep left to right, the uh, cutoff frequency changes. But if I were to go up and down, the amplitude would change. Uh, and you can see it right here, of course. Um, a particular importance, I think, is the bandpass filter, which actually only lets a particular range of frequencies through with a particular slope. So for now, our cutoff frequency is at 524 hertz. Our gain is at 0.9. And I'll talk about the Q in just a second, but this is essentially the resonance of the filter. So as is, this is the loudest frequency as they go up. In frequency, the volume goes down, and as it goes down in frequency, the volume goes down. So we're only letting through essentially this little uh, frequency band. Now, if we increase the resonance of this filter, we can either increase the Q by clicking here and dragging, or you can hover over the right side of this user interface and pull it in and pull it out. Um, 
right here, we're only letting a very narrow frequency band through. So it'll actually sound like, like it has a, an, an audible pitch. Um, so I would encourage you to just experiment and play around with this. And then of course, we can always replace the noise till the object with any kind of recording. Uh, I think they have Goldberg variations here. Um, to experiment with what it what it'll sound like. So there's a lot of fun to be had with playing around both with the sound source that we're filtering, essentially the source of the subtractive synthesis, um, and then the nature of the filter that we're playing with here. One thing that I would strongly encourage you to do is when you begin playing with this, uh, use your computer speakers. Don't use headphones and don't use monitors or any kind of uh, loudspeakers uh, because white noise um, can be very damaging to your hearing. and um, Sometimes unpredictable things happen with subtractive synthesis. Um, for example, if we have a very high Q, we need to boost the gain in order to hear it. This almost sounds like a, a noisy sine wave. Um, but then if you were to reduce the Q, Um, suddenly it becomes very loud. It could damage your hearing. So whenever possible, when you're playing with the filter graph, uh, I would suggest you keep your gain as low as possible um, just to avoid any kind of damage to your equipment or to your hearing. Uh, as usual, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and let me know.